wholly and always proportional to divinity. In the physical control of the Master Universe, the Universal Father exercises priority and primacy through the Isle of Paradise. God is absolute in the spiritual administration of the cosmos in the person of the Eternal Son. Concerning the domains of mind, the Father and the Son function coordinately in the conjoint actor. The third source and center assists in the maintenance of the equilibrium and coordination of the combined physical and spiritual energies and organizations by the absoluteness of his grasp of the cosmic mind and by the exercise of his inherent and universal physical and spiritual gravity complements. Whenever and wherever there occurs a liaison between the material and the spiritual, such a mind phenomenon is an act of the infinite spirit. Mind alone can interassociate the physical forces and energies of the material level with the spiritual powers and beings of the spirit level. In all your contemplation of universal phenomena, make certain that you take into consideration the interrelation of physical, intellectual, and spiritual energies, and that due allowance is made for the unexpected phenomena attendant upon their unification by personality, and for the unpredictable phenomena resulting from the actions and reactions of experiential deity and the absolutes. The universe is highly predictable only in the quantitative or gravity measurement sense. Even the primal physical forces are not responsive to linear gravity nor are the higher mind meanings and true spirit values of ultimate universe realities. Qualitatively, the universe is not highly predictable as regards new associations of forces, either physical, mindal, or spiritual, although many such combinations of energies or forces become partially predictable when subjected to critical observation. When matter, mind, and spirit are unified by creature personality, we are unable fully to predict the decisions of such a free will being. All phases of primordial force, nascent spirit, and other non-personal ultimates appear to react in accordance with certain relatively stable but unknown laws, and are characterized by a latitude of performance and an elasticity of response which are often disconcerting when encountered in the phenomena of a circumscribed and isolated situation. What is the explanation of this unpredictable freedom of reaction disclosed by these emerging universe actualities? These unknown, unfathomable unpredictables, whether pertaining to the behavior of a primordial unit of force, the reaction of an unidentified level of mind, or the phenomena of a vast pre-universe in the making in the domains of outer space, probably disclose the activities of the ultimate and the presence performances of the absolutes which antedate the function of all universe creators. We do not really know, but we surmise that such amazing versatility and such profound coordination signify the presence and performance of the absolutes, and that such diversity of response in the face of apparent uniform causation discloses the reaction of the absolutes, not only to the immediate and situational causation, but also to all other related causations throughout the entire Master Universe. Individuals have their guardians of destiny, planets, systems, constellations, universes, and super-universes, each have their respective rulers who labor for the good of their domains. Havona and even the Grand Universe are watched over by those entrusted with such high responsibilities. But who fosters and cares for the fundamental needs of the Master Universe as a whole, from paradise to the fourth and outermost space level? Existentially, such overcare is probably attributable to the Paradise Trinity. But from an experiential viewpoint, the appearance of the post Havona universes is dependent on 1. the absolutes in potential, 2. the ultimate in direction, 3. the supreme in evolutionary coordination, 4 the architects of the Master Universe in administration prior to the appearance of specific rulers. The unqualified absolute pervades all space. We are not altogether clear as to the exact status of the deity and universal absolutes, but we do know the latter functions wherever the deity and unqualified absolutes function. The deity absolute may be universally present, but hardly space present. The ultimate is, or sometime will be, space present to the outer margins of the fourth space level. 
We doubt that the ultimate will ever have a space presence beyond the periphery of the master universe, but within this limit the ultimate is progressively integrating the creative organization of the potentials of the three absolutes. 7. The Part and the Whole there is operative throughout all time and space, and with regard to all reality of whatever nature, an inexorable and impersonal law which is equivalent to the function of a cosmic providence. Mercy characterizes God's attitude of love for the individual. Impartiality motivates God's attitude toward the total. The will of God does not necessarily prevail in the part, the heart of any one personality, but his will does actually rule the whole, the universe of universes. In all his dealings with all his beings, it is true that the laws of God are not inherently arbitrary. To you, with your limited vision and finite viewpoint, the acts of God must often appear to be dictatorial and arbitrary. The laws of God are merely the habits of God, his way of repeatedly doing things, and he ever does all things well. You observe that God does the same thing in the same way, repeatedly, simply because that is the best way to do that particular thing in a given circumstance. And the best way is the right way, and therefore does infinite wisdom always order it done in that precise and perfect manner. You should also remember that nature is not the exclusive act of deity. Other influences are present in those phenomena which man calls nature. It is repugnant to the divine nature to suffer any sort of deterioration or ever to permit the execution of any purely personal act in an inferior way. It should be made clear, however, that if, in the divinity of any situation, in the extremity of any circumstance, in any case where the course of supreme wisdom might indicate the demand for different conduct, if the demands of perfection might for any reason dictate another method of reaction, a better one, then and there would the all-wise God function in that better and more suitable way. That would be the expression of a higher law, not the reversal of a lower law. God is not a habit-bound slave to the chronicity of the repetition of his own voluntary acts. There is no conflict among the laws of the infinite. They are all perfections of the infallible nature. They are all the unquestioned acts expressive of faultless decisions. Law is the unchanging reaction of an infinite, perfect, and divine mind. The acts of God are all volitional, notwithstanding this apparent sameness. In God there is no variableness, neither shadow of changing. But all this which can be truly said of the Universal Father cannot be said with equal certainty of all his subordinate intelligences or of his evolutionary creatures. Because God is changeless, Therefore can you depend, in all ordinary circumstances, on his doing the same thing in the same identical and ordinary way. God is the assurance of stability for all created things and beings. He is God, therefore he changes not. And all this steadfastness of conduct and uniformity of action is personal, conscious, and highly volitional, for the great God is not a helpless slave to his own perfection and infinity. God is not a self-acting automatic force. He is not a slavish, law-bound power. God is neither a mathematical equation nor a chemical formula. He is a free will and primal personality. He is the universal father, a being surcharged with personality, and the universal fount of all creature personality. The will of God does not uniformly prevail in the heart of the God-seeking material mortal. But if the time frame is enlarged beyond the moment to embrace the whole of the first life, then does God's will become increasingly discernible in the spirit fruits which are born in the lives of the spirit-led children of God. And then, if human life is further enlarged to include the Marantia experience, the divine will is observed to shine brighter and brighter in the spiritualizing acts of those creatures of time who have begun to taste the divine delights of experiencing the relationship of the personality of man with the personality of the Universal Father. The fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man present the paradox of the part and the whole on the level of personality. God loves each individual as an individual child in the heavenly family. Yet 